Hello and welcome, this is Ike Hoffman with Tactica Real Estate Solutions and today I'll show you how to build a sensitivity table in Tactica's free multifamily pro forma template. If you need a real estate Excel underwriting template, the workbook featured in the video is linked in the description below. You can download it and follow along in real time. So when researching this topic, I realized that a lot of videos out there that are building sensitivity tables are overly simplistic, especially in real estate pro forma analysis. As an example, if they strive to say stress the operating expenses, it's easy because there's only one data input for all the operating expenses. As an example, let's say they want to increase the operating expenses at 3% a year. You'd plug in 3% into one cell and that would mean that all operating expenses would increase 3% every year of the pro forma investment hold. In contrast, in Tactica's models, we offer the user a ton of optionality. We can literally control the growth or decline of every line item for each year of the investment hold. Most of these instructional videos wouldn't apply to Tactica models and they might not apply to your own pro forma if you're using something else. The more optionality there is in the pro forma template, the more thoughtful we need to be with the sensitivity table setup and none of the videos I reviewed showed the proper methods. Hopefully you can recycle the lessons I teach you today and apply them to your own pro forma if you aren't using a Tactica tool, and if you are, it should be very straightforward. If you've been enjoying Tactica's real estate tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it. If you like the video, subscribe to our channel and allow us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. We're currently looking at the summary tab of Tactica's free multifamily pro forma template, and I plan to build a couple of sensitivity tables off to the side. Before we do that, it's important to summarize what metrics we want to analyze, which variables we will stress, and which variables we will hold constant. With Excel's data table function, we only get to toggle two variables at once. I think it would be wise to first analyze the debt service coverage ratio, or the DSCR, by changing the vacancy and expense levels at the properties. So we're going to focus on the DSCR. The first variable we're going to stress is vacancy and operating expenses. Why the DSCR? Well, in the current economic climate, lenders are more strict than ever and they want to ensure property income has healthy clearance over loan payments. If this isn't the case, there may be a covenant that triggers a technical default and we want to make sure to avoid that. So why are we stressing the vacancy particular? We'll look at if vacancy goes above or below our expectations. Well, mostly because the market's softening in many cities around the country and shocking the vacancy would be smart given all the new apartment supply coming online. And why the operating expenses or the OPEX? Inflation is still pertinent and looking at different expense levels would also be appropriate when things like materials, labor, insurance have all been skyrocketing over the past couple of years. The first thing we're gonna to need to do before we create any data table or do any sensitivity analysis is recreate the year one pro forma operating financials on this tab. The data table will require your input cells to be on the same sheet. There are some workarounds to this, but that's gonna be outside of the context of this particular video. And because Tactica's assumptions are vast and span different worksheets, we need to quickly rebuild these operating financials so we have everything in one central place. While we're constructing or reconstructing these forecasted year one operations, we need to do it in a dynamic fashion. So in the future, when we're changing various pro forma assumptions on any of these tabs, the newly created financials on this tab we're about to build, they will update automatically and we never have to worry about them again. Let's start by grabbing a few different revenue items from our various pro forma analysis tabs, specifically, we want to get the rents, the vacancy, and the other income. Again, this is the forecasted year one number. So for rent, I'm gonna first go to the Unimix tab, grab the average rent at the property, and then I wanna multiply that by our forecasted year one growth rate, which is on the financials tab, we're growing rents at 5%. So we're, we're solving for a rent of an average rent of $966, and then we'll take that multiplied by 84 units at the property times 12 months, which is 973,665. For vacancy, really this is economic vacancy, so this just isn't the vacancy for the physical units, but it could be concessions, bad debt, lost to lease, those types of items. I will go to the financials tab, we'll do a sum formula, and I'll grab all the concessions, vacancy loss, and bad debt intel here. I'll close that bracket, which is in total, minus 5.5%. 5 
and we can multiply that negative 5.5 percent times the 973,000 to get our annualized vacancy and then other income I'll come to the financials tab and I will simply just grab all of the other income items we're accounting for after the net effective line item I'll close the bracket and then we have just shy of $100,000 in other income. And then we can do a quick total calculation. The total revenue at the property is approximately 1,020,000. If we come back to the financials, that adds out to what's being calculated in the model. Come back to the summary. And then we wanna grab expenses. I wanna grab them first on a per unit basis. So I'm gonna to come to the financials. We can see we have the expenses per unit summarized nicely in column Q. So I'll take the 6,436, and then we also have 300 in reserves. Don't wanna forget those. Uh, so in total, we have $6,736 in operating expenses. We need to multiply that by 84 units, and our total annual expense is 565,831. And then we can take the total revenue minus the total expenses to get an NOI of 454,000. Now we need to calculate our debt payment, you can see the debt information is summarized in the bottom left-hand corner on this tab. We're actually gonna do a quick payment formula where we take the rate, divide that by 12, the number of periods, 30 year amortization times 12. Uh, the present value of the loan would be 4.68 million. The future value would be zero. And then we need to multiply this by 12 to get an annual payment. So the total debt payment, about $374,000. And now we can calculate the debt service coverage ratio, which just takes the NOI divided by the debt, which equals 1.22. So I just wanna confirm everything's correct. Um, you can see that the NOI that we calculated here is 454,000. Wanna make sure actually that it, it ties out to our, our more robust, sophisticated pro forma. If we come to this tab, the NOI in, in column P, which is our forecasted year one numbers, it's 454,056, so we are good there. And then we calculated a DSCR of 1.22. If we go to the valuation tab, the DSCR in the more robust model is also 1.22. So with that, we're ready to start constructing our data tables. We wanna look at how the debt service coverage ratio is gonna change at different vacancy and operating expense thresholds that the property could experience during our ownership hold. Let's start by putting the, our vacancy assumptions on the horizontal axis of the data table. So it's, it's really the economic vacancy. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab back on the financials tab, the concessions, vacancy loss, and bad debt, debt data. I'm gonna lock that cell. Um, so it's we have all of that equals 5.5%. And then we wanna see what would happen to the DSCR if vacancy improves upon our baseline assumption. So let's add half a point and we'll drag that over a few cells. And then if vacancy increases during the hold or we don't meet expectations, we'll delete half of a percentage point and then we'll drag that over a few cells. So we're gonna be able to look at the debt service coverage ratio from anywhere between seven and 4%. So a pretty wide range. And then on the vertical axis, we wanna grab the expense data. I'm gonna grab the expenses on a per unit basis. That's a lot more intuitive. If you're looking at a lot of properties, you should have kind of a frame of reference for what a property should be operating on a per unit basis. It's, it's more of kind of an apples to apples comparison where the gross expenses aren't gonna mean a whole lot. So to get that, I'm gonna hit equals. We'll go back to the financials tab. Our forecasted year one expenses per unit are summarized in column Q. We'll grab that in the total expenses row, 6,436. And then we don't wanna forget the reserves either, the 300 per unit in reserves. Now I wanna look at how the DSCR will change um, with expenses per unit going up or going down in 5% intervals. So I'm gonna click our baseline assumption and we'll add 1.05. Yes, drag that down a couple cells. And also if we can beat our pro form estimate and decrease expenses in 5% intervals, We'll drag that up a couple cells. And we have an expenses per unit range of about 5.8 thousand to almost 8 thousand per unit. And then at the origin of our axis, we need to grab the DSCR. This is just how the data table functions. And now we can create our data table. So I'm gonna highlight all the data we just inputted. We will go to data, what if analysis, data table. 
the row input cells are are the are the variables that move from left to right, which is our vacancy. So I'm going to grab the vacancy from our recently constructed, simplified, forecasted year one operating statement. And then the column input cell variables move up and down, which is our expenses per unit. We'll click OK. And then our data table populates. So what did Excel do? It just literally swapped all these different vacancy numbers we have in here and all these different expenses per unit numbers into these two assumptions here and calced the updated DSCR and then populated this model above. It's hard to read right now. The first thing I want to do is just add some formatting to make it easier to read. So I'm gonna make the background black. I will make the text white. I'm gonna do the same thing on the vertical axis. And then I'm actually gonna make the DSCR text black so it's hidden. We don't need to see that anymore. We we need to have that cell there for the data table to work properly, but it's not very intuitive if we can see it. And then I'm gonna add some conditional formatting. So I'm gonna do, if it's less than, yeah, 1.2, it did that automatically for us. We'll click OK. We can see the different scenarios where the DSCR dips below 1.2 much easier. Some other things about this data table, the middle of the table is what we currently have in the pro forma. I'm gonna turn that cell green. I'm gonna highlight the DSCR down here. This is kind of our baseline assumption. We're projecting a 1.22 DSCR ratio, which would meet the lender's criteria. But there's, as you can see here, there's not a whole lot of clearance, just a small slippage in vacancy. We're gonna fall below that 1.2. Just some other general data table things. In this particular one, the upper right-hand corner is the best case scenario. The lower left-hand corner is the worst case scenario. As I mentioned, not a lot goes wrong before we dip into 1.2. So the strength of looking at these tables is what can we do in our pro forma to give us some more clearance? One idea might be less leverage. So right now we have a 60% loan, 7% interest. What if we could get a 55% loan and get a slightly lower rate, 6.75%? You can see there are much fewer red cells now. There's a little bit more clearance, but on the negative, you would need to bring more cash to the closing table because um, we are using less leverage. Other option might be to pay less. We're currently at 7.8 million. What if we could negotiate that down to 7.5? Now we can slip a little bit further and still be above that 1.2. With, with just those two changes, now in the model, our baseline DSCR is 1.41. What I like about these changes that we've made, in no scenario anywhere in this data table would we ever be losing money. You can see in the most worst of worst scenarios, vacancy gets up to 7% and expenses per unit to 7,798. The DSCR is still 1.09, which while it's below 1.2, it's still above one, which means the project is cash flow positive. One nice thing about data tables is once you create one and you get past that initial setup, which is a little tedious as, as you've seen, it's usually pretty easy to piggyback off of that first one and create more data tables with minimal work. So we can just copy and paste this, make some minor adjustments and analyze something else. So in this example we're, we're looking at, we focused on the DSCR and specifically how it changed when vacancy and operating expense levels at the property changed. Well, let's do a similar analysis. We're gonna still look at the DSCR, but instead of toggling OPEX, let's instead look at rents. That's also another big factor, important factor. Rents in many markets around the country are decreasing. So we wanna look at how the DSCR would change if, if rent is greater or less than our baseline pro forma projections. So I'm gonna take this entire, well, first variable tune is going to be rent. And I'm going to take the entire data table and I'm going to copy and paste it below. And this time, so I'm going to again grab the DSCR. We want to make sure that flows into this, the origin of the, the two axes here. And then we'll instead grab the rents from the unit mix tab. So the, the current in place rents are 920 and then we're going to multiply it by the growth, gross potential rent assumption we have on the financials tab. So that's 966 and then i want to look at the rent changing in 50 dollars interval so what will happen to dscr if rent decreases by 50 dollars and i'll drag that up and what happens if it increases by 50 dollars and then i'll drag that down and then we're going to highlight again the entire data table we'll go to data what if analysis data table our row input cell, 
That's the variable that moves from left to right, which is still the vacancy, same as the last data table. But this time, our column input cell is going to be the rent. It's no longer the operating expense. Hit OK. And our data table is complete. Data table is a little different. So now the best case scenario is the lower right. You can see the DSCR will get up to 1.91 if we can manage a 4% vacancy and get the rent to $1,116. In the upper left-hand corner is the worst case scenario. That would be a vacancy hit 7% and rent fell all the way to $816. What's nice is with the numbers we currently have in the pro forma model, remember we back the purchase price off to 7.5 million, the LTV of the loan down to 55%. Even if rents dropped by $50 from our projected year one, 966, we would still be covering a 1.2 regardless of what vacancy does, assuming it stays between the 4% to 7% band. If rents drop all the way to 816, we're gonna be losing money. You can see that the DSCR is less than one, except for the scenario where vacancy is 4%. So the next question is, what would it take to have the entire 866 row, so rents $100 less than we're projecting, to be above 1.2? Because right now, none of those DSCRs hit that threshold. If we drop, if we were able to negotiate down to 6,750,000, that would just about do the trick. Actually, it does do the trick. 1.2 is, is still firing red, but that would still meet the lender's criteria. One last thing I wanna show you is that this data table we just created, it's dynamic. So when we're coming into the pro forma and we're doing things like, um, let's say we're running a 6% vacancy, and a 1% and a bad debt and expenses, um, let's run a 5% management fee. So it's gonna, expenses are gonna be more expensive than we were initially projecting. And then we can change our rent assumption to maybe we just do 2% rent growth instead of 5%. When we come back to these data tables on the summary tab, they're reflecting these changes that we've made. You can see that the middle point of the data table, remember this is what we have in the pro forma, our vacancy is now 7%. In the past examples, it was 5.5. And our expenses per unit have jumped up to 6,833 because we changed the management fee to 5% from 4%. Same thing happened to the second data table. The middle point, what we have in the, in the pro forma is 7%. So the band, the band of vacancy is now 5.5% from the best case scenario to 8.5% in the worst case scenario. Rents have also decreased. The middle point is 938. I think it was like 966 before. So as you're updating your numbers in the pro forma, these data tables will adjust in real time to reflect those changes you're making kind of in the more sophisticated model. So once we've completed our data tables, we, we know they're working just to clean up the, the model a bit and just make it a little easier on the eyes. We can go to data and we can group these cells and then we can hide, hide those columns. So now we just see the data table. We know everything's accurate and dynamic. And when we're changing our numbers on these various tabs, our data table's always gonna be reflective of those changes. In summary, we made two Excel data tables to stress test the DSCR of our real estate investment. One thing I didn't mention is that these data tables can really slow down your Excel workbook. When you're not actively using them, you should consider setting your calculations as automatic except for data tables. This will ensure they aren't running all the time and exhausting your computer's memory. I have some other blog posts linked in the description below that explain other sensitivity tables I've created in some of Tactica's paid pro forma tools. I don't explain how to build them, but if nothing else, they can act as inspiration for you know what a data table is capable of capturing in the realm of real estate underwriting. If you've been enjoying Tactica's tutorial content, I'd really appreciate it if you liked the video, subscribe to our channel, and allowed us to notify you when we're releasing new video content. I really appreciate your time and attention. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.